Hi Gemini, welcome to your October, I nearly forgot the month then, <laughs> welcome to your October 2021. Love and general reading, I'm Gemstone Tarot and you are Gemini. Sun, moon, rising, Venus, everybody welcome, maybe you're not Gemini, maybe you're just passing by, maybe you are cross-watching, we will see. We are using, I always like to sniff my tarot, we're using the Rider weight. That is done, except that was a crossover. Ooh, your cards have come out in one block. Hmm, there's loads of them. Ooh. Spiritual, wow. Spiritual big jobs, cripes. What have you been up to? Tell me in the comments section <laughs> if you want to. I always like to hear how they're resonating. Okay, wow. Stick that there, okay. So we'll have a look at some of the individual cards, then we'll have a look at the spread on the table as the cards relate to each other. I'm just gonna press this. There. Always forget to do that. Right. By gum. For some reason, I want to start here, so I'm going to. We've got the Ten of Swords. Never a pretty sight, the Ten of Swords. I remember an old book I used to have on tarot, which used to say, a soldier lies with ten swords in his back and he is very dead. I'd be like, great. <laughs> Especially if you, the question was, how is this relationship going? You'd be like, Hmm, how to spin that. Okay, so now that we've all kind of got over that a little bit, what I have learned, and especially if you watch my dailies, you will see that when I pull one ten, I nearly always pull another. <clears throat> so the one that came out, funnily enough, right next to this was the Ten of Cups. So we've got two tens together. Nice. Two tens together is not news for me, but it is an indication that if I'm looking at a tarot reading, that you are dealing with a month where significant things are created and got rid of, okay? You could say created and purged. Ten of Swords is definitely a card of catharsis. It's a card of working through kind of issues with things, okay? Working through, for in your case, some kind of toxicity is coming out. Um, by the way, there will be an extended reading as ever and the link will be below in the description box. So if this resonates with you, that's where you can find that. You've got the Ten of Swords next to the Ten of Cups and it feels like there's two sides of a coin. In order to reach the Ten of Cups, you do need to be willing to navigate the Ten of Swords. Now, for some reason, I'm channeling Scorpio energy for this. And I know I'm not dealing with Scorpios because you're Geminis, but there is something for some of you, might only be one or two of you, that's very significant about Scorpio energy. If you take yourself back, to May 2020, about the 7th of May, I think it was, have a look in the Moon Diaries or online. I think there was like a full moon in Scorpio or a new moon in Scorpio, it might have been a new moon. Either way, I remember doing a lot of shadow readings around then and bits of it have come back for certain star signs. Now that's not surprising, because Scorpio rules the death card, Scorpio rules getting down and dirty in the emotions. It's what I always call with Scorpios going down in the emotional sewer. They're willing to do that job. It's like we will clear everybody's emotional waste so that the zodiac wheel can keep turning, okay? So if you take this as to what's happening in your life in October, something is the universe, I suppose, if we want to call it something, is seeking to unearth what is toxic in your life and what is getting in your way. Next to the Ten of Cups here, 
I've got the devil card. Now, if we look at this devil card, it's he's presiding over this couple. So he's got the control, not them. He's in control of the situation. These two are chained to each other and they're also chained to him. So they're like double bound. I mean, they're completely chained to each other so they can't even work out what's going on there and chained to him so they don't even know where they begin and he ends. This could be codependency for you. You may be experiencing some codependency in your relationships. It could be your work relationships. It could be your romantic relationships. And it can also be your family relationships, your family history and where you've come from. Because it does feel, and I am going to have a look in my smelly basket. I'm just going to do Chuck Spetsano healing card on that. So I'm interested to know. What do we need to know, that one? Oh, that's nice. We'll take it. Yeah, I'm going to take one more. What do we need to know about the devil, the ten of swords? Okay, there it is. There it is, people. Okay, this is good. So, we get here the grace card of vision. This is about manifesting and seeing where you want to end up rather than where you might at the moment be feeling quite stuck. Some of you, I think, are feeling quite stuck. But this is your hopes, your dreams, your manifesting. If you think of the sea as hopes and dreams and subconscious, think of yourself as picturing that lighthouse, you know, going out to the lighthouse. That's my destination. Yes, there may be boulders, there may be sharks, there may be, you know, all the things that Odysseus had to put up with in the Odyssey, but I will overcome, overcome, <laughs> that doesn't sound like a hero speech, I will overcome them, I will overcome them, okay, I will overcome the obstacles. Then we have leadership, healing, healing in your own leadership, which actually all it involves is getting in the boat, the universe is saying to you, and it's a bit like a six of swords type message, I've, I've got a boat ready, there's some oars, you know, it's packed lunch in there, and some, I don't know, whatever people need in boats, because I never go in boats, but whatever you need is in the boat, the universe is there, all the universe asks is that you trust the water and get in the boat, okay, metaphorically. Now, what is holding us back? Fear. So this person sees this, I think it's a cat, and projects this enormous figure of a panther or whatever you want to call it, something big and scary, <laughs> a big and scary cat. I'm pretty sure this is what my cat Valentine thinks she looks like when she does that toilet brush tail. You know, when they come in through the cat flap really quick and they're like, <laughs> nothing to see here, <laughs> a bit like that. You may have a bog brush tail, okay? Gemini, there's something you're afraid of. In a relationship, you may be afraid that it's gonna break up. You may be afraid that if you say something, you're gonna be pushing it too far. Or you may be afraid that your past relationships with your family or your family history or where you come from is impacting on the present. Okay. Judgment. Past, present and future knitted together. That's why there's always three people in the judgment card. Judgment calls on you to take another look at things, to almost relive things. And almost certainly we don't want to do this. You know, we feel the resistance, especially when you've got that devil card, because the devil card also represents things that you were sold I think okay I'm gonna have a look at the spread a minute if we look there at the cards I think I've got most of them in there's some on the right but I'll bring them in in a minute and that's strength hiding behind the box there and okay if you look here at the two tens and the devil and this little clutch of cards moving up to judgment you've got 
the future that you were promised and the reality of what actually happened here. These two things playing each other off. And again, for some of you, this might represent a relationship or where you're currently at with somebody. There may be some threads of addiction or codependency within that relationship. But where do they come from and how can you get to the Ten of Cups? Judgment says you're going to need to look at your past, you're going to need to look at your present, and you're going to need to look at your future. And if you look at those cards that you got here, the healing cards of healing leadership, and the grace card of vision, envisioning your future differently, it's just very important that you know that where you've come from is not necessarily where you're going, okay? Your destination is not what they said it was going to be. And whether that's you getting the right relationship, the right person, the right job, that's now your story to write, not somebody else's. And although that sounds very rousing and yes, it's my story to write, you know, yes, and all that stuff, that is not easy. It's much easier to follow the book that's already been written than to create your own. You know, you ask any novelist, or some of you, if you've tried it, you will know, or maybe you're a successful novelist and it's still difficult, even when you're successful, creating something new, something out of nothing is hard. And this is what the universe is asking you to do, but the opportunity is good. We have this strength card down here. Are you strong enough, says the universe? Sorry, I'm trying to still work out my camera these days. Um, are you strong enough? Have you got what it takes? Okay. I think the answer to this is yes. There's a lot of major arcana in here. Some of you are dealing in a relationship that may have um, quite high levels of attraction. I'm just seeing that here with the two tens and with the devil card. It may be with a Leo for some of you because of that strength card. Or someone who's a Leo Virgo cusp or Cancer Leo cusp. For some of you, I think you're also maybe dealing with a um, Aquarius because you can't see it because he's just on the side. But over here, I've got the Magician. And one day I will learn how to use my camera properly. I've got the Magician. That represents Aquarius for me. So some of you are dealing with Aquarians and some of you are dealing with Leos. And obviously there's a bit of Capricorn thrown in here. One of two, one or two of you might be dealing with a Capricorn. It feels like there is a day of reckoning ahead. When we get this judgment card, there is a sense in which, you know, the, the angel trumpets, if you look here as well, um, where you've got the angel kind of presiding over the family and here you've got the devil presiding over the couple. The angel is the force of good and wants you to... Um, wants you to take something that was very painful and difficult and change it. You know, so if this is... If this is you and you're in a relationship that is challenging you at the moment, that is difficult. And for some of you, I think you are, because another message that I'm getting here is that some of you are involved with someone who's a bit absent, or a lot absent, to be honest, <coughs> because these cards very much refer to you. They hint at a connection with someone else and yet they refer to you. So where is the someone else? It feels like, and this magician energy, this really interests me. It feels like there's two messages. One is that you are the magician in this scenario. You are bringing this about. You're making it happen. It's number one, it's when the fool learns the tools of the tarot and the magic and how to do it and takes control to a certain extent. This whole Bee Gees pose that the magician has is as above, so below. I can bring the magic down to earth, which is starting to sound like a Bee Gees song, isn't it? 
Um, I'm a big fan of the Bee Gees, actually. It feels like the universe wants you to take control, but it also feels like some of you are dealing with someone who is quite influential or powerful, at least in your world. You know, they have some source of power over you. Speaking of your world, we get the world card. This is a big cycle, it's a big life cycle. When you get the world card, it's not just like, oh, what am I doing this week? You know, what am I doing um, in general? It's a whole kind of, um, I call it spiritual big jobs in the dailies. It's a big thing. A big cycle you know sometimes I really find it hard to give spiritual things a word because I think when you name them it really takes away from them so you're Gemini you've got quick minds you can work out what I mean it's a big deal it's a big cycle it's something very important that comes from your past so if you are involved in a rather tricky relationship situation you must says the universe go back to your past and see what happened in your family dynamics. Ten of Swords means you're ready. You're ready to see. You know, it's also a card that says, if you really wanted to hurt me, you should have got to me sooner. It's that feeling of power, remember that strength card, which comes up when you've been so knocked down that you it becomes a strength you know it gives you an insight and it makes you into a person who has nothing to lose in a way and that's a very powerful position to be in in the extended reading i'm going to look for the other person in this reading it's like a missing person search um, because that's what's really coming up to me. I'm also going to look at the Ten of Swords, Ten of Cups, the Devil card, and that magician who's kind of winking over here. Now look, we also have um, the Ace of Pentacles, the ability to bring something and make it happen out of this. And it could be a business venture. We have the Two of Pentacles, which is juggling pentacles, making things happen, being creative, all involving some kind of money normally when you've got the pentacles. It's earthy though. It's what can I bring out of this that is actually real? Something that's really going to bear fruit, okay? Whether that's a relationship, whether it's your career, something has to come of this. And up here, we have a very un-Gemini card of the Knight of Pentacles. Someone who is willing to wait, be patient, and pick the right time for something, okay? Now, up here, interestingly, this Queen of Wands, and there's my cat Valentine. Queen of Wands is the Diva card, but it's also the card of stepping up saying what you want, knowing what you're worth, being that person, okay? The universe really, really requires this of you, Gemini, almost whether you like it or not, and sometimes you're not gonna like it, but it is necessary, okay? And then over here, to go with that, the Four of Wands, which is the gateway card. What the universe is saying is if you can navigate judgment, the magician, the devil, the world, the strength card, then there is a big prize waiting for you, okay? Whether that's in relationship, work, or most likely a combination of the two. Nice, I love your reading, Gemini. Let's have an oracle card about it. I'm gonna take two oracle cards, that one. <laughs> I'm not surprised to see that one at all. Oh wow, I love this for you. I don't think you're surprised to see this either. Chaos, 
and conflict. Now, Geminis are good at chaos and conflict, thank God. Um, you are a sign that thrives, you're mutable and intellectual, and you're a sign that thrives on change. This is something you may have not wanted to confront, but it's going to be so much better for you in the long run, okay? And I think you kind of already know that. And then this card, I love this card. These are Wisdom of the Oracle by Colette Baron reed by the way. Um, this card is Regeneration. It's like, I am growing something out of scorched earth. Something about your past with that Devil card and the Ten of Swords is literally scorched earth. And you will know, okay, if this is resonating with you, you, you can't not know. That's the thing. It's like an awakening. You're going to have an awakening about your life, your destiny, your career, your relationship, the whole shebang. And it turns you into the magician. But you know, the magician can be number one, which can be a lonely number, but that's the position that the universe is putting you in. Okay. Oof. I can't wait to go and do your extended reading. I'm going to do it right now. And the link will be in the description box. Do like, share and subscribe. We'll see you on the other side. Namaste.